online and, and start watching and stuff. And then I'm going to show you how to make um, these lovely fabric baskets. Okay, uh, they're called a one hour fabric basket because you can genuinely make one in an hour. And once you've made one, it'll take you a lot less than an hour. Way think the Wi-Fi is hopefully you'll be okay, able to uh, okay we should be back there we go hopefully we're back guys sorry a bit of a technical hitch there um the uh, wi-fi was playing up for a second so uh we managed to get that sorted so i don't know if you lost me or whether you just saw me going oh what what's going on <laughs> um anyway we're gonna make these some of these fabric baskets and like i was saying um once you've done one you will do that they take a lot less than an hour way way less than an hour to do um the pattern is available on our website for these um, on whitegeckocraftlounge.co.uk um, and the pattern actually includes all three sizes okay so there's a large a medium and then a little tiny baby one as well a little small one okay um, we're going to make the medium size today I'm going to show you how to make that um, but then once, you, once you've made one they're all exactly the same method you just just mix and match them just change the sizes okay so um, we're also going to give these three baskets away. We're going to do a bit of a free prize draw like we did with the thread catcher last time. So um, if you're there and you're watching, say hello. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to put any major comments, but do say hello to us. And what we'll do is anyone who comments on the video and uh, while it's live, um, we'll put their names into um, a, a draw and then we'll the win or, or win the three baskets. So these have been done with um, a really lovely fabric. This is Macawa's Rhapsody fabric. We've done them, I don't know if you, Drew's just gonna get in close. Sorry, my cameraman's my son, Drew. He's uh, just gonna get in really close for you guys. So just so you can see. So I've used the Rhapsody fabric by Macawa. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> and I've still got my notifications on. So we're not doing very well with technology today, are we? <laughs> Sorry guys. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to give these away. So please do say hello, just, just, or a smiley face or something, but comment and anybody whose name comes up in the comments will, will do that. Okay. So like I said, we're going to do the medium size. Okay. Um, but the pattern is, like I said, available and you can do, it's got all three sizes in there. So what you're going to need is now I'm doing it in this really, really bright, Pokemon fabric because uh, my youngest is a huge Pokemon fan and I'm going to give it to him once it's made this one um, to keep all his bits and pieces in in his bedroom and he's got like all these little you know computer games or his um, DS games and all he's forever losing them so I thought it's a way for him to keep them in there okay but you can use these they're not just for sewing or crafting you can i've got some in my bathroom that i keep like nail polishes and makeup and stuff in um you can use them obviously in your sewing rooms and things for fat quarters and things like that um anywhere around the house really all the way around the house so um come up with, give me some ideas <laughs> there you go give me some ideas of where you might use one of these so who's there drew anybody saying hello anybody online yeah we've got a fair few we've got nikki we've got sandra grace ash Fran McKeon, if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> uh, Sorry if we don't get the pronunciations right. <laughs> Jane Deacon, we've got loads of people joining oh, us. Oh, lovely. Fabulous. Thank you for joining us. So what you're going to need, again, in the instructions, um, you've got all the different sizes, but you're going to need two rectangles of your... Right, start again. Of your one fabric, <laughs> you're going to need two rectangles, okay, which are 12 and a half by four inches. So that's that one there. Okay, so imagine that I'm, I've done a couple of extra steps. Okay, so you're going to need two rectangles that size, and you're also going to need two rectangles which are seven by four as well. Okay, and they're going to make your handles. And then for the bottom of the basket and your lining, you're going to need two pieces which are 12 and a half by three and a half, and then you're going to need two lining pieces which are 12 and a half by seven. Okay. You're going to start very, very simply, okay, by sewing one of your top fabrics to one of your bottom fabrics like that, okay? So we're going to do that first. Just want to say, if you've got a directional fabric, now luckily this one isn't really directional. Pikachu's going all over it, so it didn't really matter when I was cutting it out. But if you've got a directional fabric, you, you're to the top of your basket running along here, that's the, along this edge here, that's the 12 and a half, okay? So when you're cutting your fabric, think about where where you're cutting so that you, you know, if you've got something with roses on or something, your roses aren't going downwards or sideways, okay? 
So we're going to sew using a quarter of an inch. We're going to sew these two together. Now I'm chosen a nice bright orange thread to match this orange and I'm going to do my top stitching in the same colour but you could use a contrasting thread if you wanted. Um, I Because I'm going to be sewing on wadding in a minute as well, I'm not using my quarter inch foot, I've just got a normal foot on and I've moved my needle over, okay? So you can do that as well. Okay, so sorry, just dig out the, uh, oh, the pedals, pedals gone on the walker bag. There it is, is it gone? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm going to stitch these two together. Just a quarter of an inch down the one side. Okay. So my machine is still sounding a bit ropey, I'm afraid. It's been worked very, very hard the last few weeks. <laughs> and it is, uh, it is sounding a weeny bit noisy. So sorry about the noise. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron that out, that seam out, towards the orange fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to set that seam first of all and then iron it out like that and just press that in place okay you now want to pop this onto a piece of wadding you just want your wadding to be a weeny bit bigger than this okay um, I've been quite quite generous with that because we're going to cut off the excess um, if you've got like lots of bits of um, scrap wadding hanging around and stuff um, you can zigzag it together and use up all those scrappy bits because you know it's not you know, it doesn't matter if you've got joins of the wadding, you're not going to feel it or, or anything. So I like to use a basting spray for this. You don't have to, you could just wing it or tack it on if you want to. But I do like a bit of basting spray on. Oops. Just to hold that fabric in place, like that. Okay. There we go. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to just do some top stitching just to attach this fabric to the wadding. And I'm going to, you can see on this one here, hopefully, this is a nice close up. I've just done a couple of simple lines on this one, um, you know, because my, my boy's not going to be particularly fussy about what I do on it. So I've just done some simple lines, but this is an ideal opportunity to have a play with some of the decorative stitches you've got on your machine. You know, you could, you know, really, you know, do some nice lines of and play with those stitches. You know, we all, we've got them on our machines and uh, <laughs> half the time we don't use them. So I think it's quite a nice way of... Um, using the, you know, using them and trying them out. So, while I'm doing this little bit of stitching, any comments there, Drew? Anybody? Uh, any questions Sandra, or anything? Sandra ha Hatton asked, uh, "What basting spray do you use?" Um, so we stock two in the shop. We've got we use the 505, which I do like, but we also do the Jean Taylor basting spray, which is what this one is, the quilt basting spray. I think this one's a little bit lighter. Um, if you've got some more delicate fabrics, you know, if maybe you're using Tana Lawn or something in your quilting, I think this is a little bit lighter. It's not quite as sticky. Um, but I, uh, to be honest, I mix and match between the two of them. I, you know, it depends totally for me, whichever can <laughs> comes out, comes first. So, cause I, I really can't distinguish between the quality of them, but they are both fabulous. So I'm just going to, like I said, just going to do a couple of lines of stitching and all I'm going to do, let me just move those baskets out of the way a second so you can see. All I'm going to do is just put my, the edge of my foot up against that seam because you've got a natural little ridge there which can help you um, go, go, what's the word? Guideline. It's like a little natural guideline. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go all the way down there. So how's everybody doing? Everybody enjoying the sunshine? It's been beautiful here in Dennis today. Really, really lovely. Really nice. It's uh, been a, the wind's been quite windy, so it's been a brilliant washing day. But the sun has been out. It's been gorgeous. So, uh, so Sean said, uh, could you hand sew this pattern to make the baskets? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could hand sew them. There's no reason what, whatsoever why you couldn't hand sew them. You know, just do a nice sort of um, strong back stitch rather than use a machine. Absolutely, you could hand sew. And then Heidi asked, what are you making? And is the basting spray some sort of glue? It is, sorry, yes. So we're making these fabric baskets here, Heidi. Okay, we're going to do, we're doing the, the medium size um, is the demonstration. But the pattern comes with all three sizes. So we're making these little storage baskets. And the basting spray, yes, absolutely, it's a spray glue. Now, you can get in, you know, like lots of cheapy shops, you know, B&M and Home Bargains, or you can get stuff that's called fabric spray um, or spray adhesive. Please don't use that on your, on your cotton fabrics, on your good fabrics. It's brilliant for, you know, upholstery or carpets and stuff like that. 
but it will um, mark your fabrics. Cotton can't take that stuff. So I would suggest um, either 505 or the June Taylor one, um, either brand, but they, they're brilliant for quilting because they're a, a fabric friendly glue. Um, you could tack it in place. So if you haven't got glue, you could just tack it in place while you're doing your, your stitching. So I'm just going to do a little second line of stitching down, just to give it a bit of detail. And like I said, you could use your decorative stitches, you could play around with them. You know, if you've got a really posh machine that does letters and stuff, you could you know, write somebody's name or you know what, what you wanted on it. Okay, so I've attached that to the wadding. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to trim that back to get rid of that excess wadding. Okay. Just using a quilt ruler and just lining it up on the edge of the fabric and getting rid of any of that excess. Okay. The reason we do excess um, is that when you're quilting and stitching through wadding, it kind of sucks up. Um, and if you do it exactly the same size to start with, you might find that the wadding has kind of been sort of sucked in and then it's not at the edge of the fabrics. So I do tend to always make it just a weeny bit bigger. I was quite generous with this. I wouldn't have made it quite as big, but I thought for the demo, let's uh, make sure you can see that it's a bit bigger. So any questions there? Anybody, everybody with me so far? Oh, it's my bin gone. Everybody with me so far? Not so far. Uh, no questions so far. Uh, Tracy uh, asked, could you use interfacing instead of wadding? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, nice firm interfacing. You could do that. Yeah, that would um, it would give it a slightly different look, not quite as, as sort of puffy, but that would absolutely give you you know enough body to hold them. Um, you could also use bosal. Don't know if anybody, any of you guys out there have used bosal before, which is like a foam. It's a fusible foam, so again, that would give it a really nice. If you want something a bit really sturdy, bosal in there as well would work. Okay. Right, okie doke. So, what you want to do next is we're going to cut out some little squares in the bottom corners okay so what you want to, want to do is you want to measure for the medium sized bag now this the size of the square depends on what size bag you're doing so i'm going to try and just get this oh there we go can you see that for looking so i'm going to measure out a two inch square okay so there's two inches that way two inches that way just using a little marker just to mark that square and i'm going to do exactly can you see i've Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. I've just marked out a two inch square that side. I'm going to do exactly the same in the other corner. So two inches by two inches, like that. And then I'm just going to cut that out. So you can do it with a rotary cutter, but actually it's just as quick to do it with your scissors. Okay, I'm just going to cut that out. There we go. <laughs> I've got the radio on in the background. And it's Olivia Newton-John playing Let's Get Physical. And I, just, <laughs> I want to sing along with it because it's one of those songs I kind of grew up with. <laughs> and I keep hearing little snippets of it. <laughs> okay, so obviously I did this one before I came on air. So make, make sure the time wasn't too bad. So you want to make two exactly the same, okay? And then you want to do exactly the same again with your lining fabric. Now you're gonna, not going to put it onto wadding, but what I mean is you're going to cut out those two inch squares there okay and you're going to do that on both pieces of your lining and then you want to put those aside just for a moment okay I'm going to show you how to make the handles and then we can put it all together because it comes together really quickly so seven inches by four inches I'll just grab my little iron and what you want to do is you want to fold that in half like that and iron a nice sharp crease in there now I always starch my fabrics before I um, I start. Um, I find that they sew better and also you get a nice sharp crease as well. It just gives you a much better line to work on. And then we're gonna open it back out and you might have made handles like this before, but I'll just show you again. So, and then you're gonna take this raw edge here and you're gonna push it into the center. Now you don't want it to touch the center exactly, okay? You just want to sort of get it near as near as you can because if you get it right on the center and then this one right on the center when you fold over you've got a lot of bulk right in that seam so you want to go as near as you can but leave you know a, a smidgen <laughs> whatever a smidgen is but you know just just a weeny bit okay before the 
um, center crease and then you're going to do the same the other side okay and just iron those that in like that and then fold them back over again and then we're going to top stitch down both sides okay um, so I've did it, done it on this one already but I'm just going to top stitch down both sides about an eighth of an inch away from the edge okay. so while I'm doing this Drew any comments there anybody there uh, Heidi said good tip using extra wadding, thanks. That's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil's joined us, but it's fine. Yeah. My husband's back up in London working at the moment. Uh, he's online to uh, watch me do this. <laughs> okay, so I've just sewn down one side an eighth of an inch, and then I'm going to go back down the other side exactly the same. Now, I've done these this basket in two fabrics, but this is a perfect op Ooh, sorry, my, my foot keep, keeps moving. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to use up lots and lots of scraps. So it wouldn't matter if your handles were a different colour again. You know, I could have gone with maybe a black or something and picked out something else that was in there. You know, you could do the bottom of the basket a different colour to the lining. You know, it's it's a brilliant way of using up all those little bits that we have lying around that we're not necessarily sure what to do with. So make the handles different. Don't both have to be the same. <laughs> Sharon said, could I order the Pokemon fabric? Oh, no. I'm sorry, lovely. We don't have this this fabric. I bought this um, at a show. You know, I went to a show because we had a stand, the shop, and um, I saw it in a, a different supplier. I think it was um, Lauren Tom's stand. I think uh, the quilt shop, um, I believe they've got it. If you, if you Google the quilt shop, um, they're based down... Um, Tembi way um, they've got an online shop and I believe I bought it from them I bought it purely because Tom my little one loves Pokemon so I wanted to do something for him with it <laughs> and I thought it was nice and bright so it would show up on camera today for you guys as well so that's my two handles done you've got your two fronts done okay and then I've already cut out my two lining pieces now we can start assembling it so I'm going to put these two right sides together and you want to line up those squares at the bottom okay so hang on let me just move this one out of the way a second because I'm done with that what what I like as well is so that it, you've got a sort of a continuous line I'm going to line up this seam so this seam here with this seam here okay can you see so I'm just sort of rolling it back so that that seam is lined up like that and I would pop a pin in there and grab Dave who's, who's my pin cushion today and pop a pin in there to hold that in place okay and then I'm going to do the same this side so I'm going to match up those seams like that and roll it down so that they're all in line and pop a pin in that side okay now what I want to do is I'm going to sew down both of these two sides here and straight across the bottom you're not going to sew in here okay just sew down the sides and across the bottom and I would use I probably use a edge of foot at this point I wouldn't use a quarter of an inch because you've got quite a lot of bulk in there with the wadding you've got two layers of wadding and fabric um I wouldn't go quarter of an inch you need, you want a little bit more than that so I'm going to pop my machine back to just a central stitch which will give me three eighths of an inch is it just a bit bigger and I'm just going to use the edge of the foot to go down the two sides and cross the bottom uh so. Tracy says she loves your pin cushion Ah, yeah, this is Dave the Dash Hound. Um, so actually, if you're interested, ladies, in, in making one of these, um, my colleague Sarah Jane, on Thursday this week, um, we do a Facebook Live tutorial every day at one o'clock on, on our Facebook page, um, which is obviously the same as this sort of thing. Lots of you know, classes and every day is a different, different demo. Um, Sarah's actually going to be making Dave. Um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a, this Thursday. If you check out our page, or ev everything we're doing this week is on there. So um, if you love him, you can sew along with Sarah, and she will show you how to do it. <laughs> it's quite an old pattern that one. I think it was from Sew Magazine or or one of those years ago. Um, it was a free template online, um, and we've had so many people ask about them. I'm sure it is. It's Thursday she's doing it. I remember. <laughs> so I've stitched down the one side and then I'm going across the bottom. Okay. 
Any other questions there, Drew, while I'm doing uh, this? No, but we've got Hilary Field who says hi from the USA. Oh, wow. Hi. And then Heidi asks, what's your page? Oh, uh, my Facebook page, well, our Facebook page. It's um, If you go onto Facebook and pop in White Gecko Craft Lounge, you'll find us. <laughs> We're the only ones there. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so I've sewn down the two sides and across the bottom. There we go. And then take those pins out. And now we want to make the base of the basket. So we're going to open up these little square bits here, okay, like this. And you so pop your fingers in, open them out, and you're going to get the side seam here to meet the bottom seam there, like that. Well, let me just get this out of the way so you can see it. Can you see that I'm lining those up like that? Now, you can iron this out, but I, I don't really like ironing wadding. It can, I'm using some polyester wadding, but you can use whatever you've got there. Um, if you iron the wadding too much, it goes really stiff. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make, actually, just make them go either side like that. Okay. And again, we're going to stitch across there. So I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. I'm going to open that out and pop the, bottom seam against the side seam like that I'll make those go the other way and then we're going to stitch across okay so I'm going to stitch across both of those any other questions there guys while I'm doing um, this Sandra said loving the quilt behind you sir ah oh, thank you this was um that's one of the Jean Taylor quilts you go packs that we um we do in store actually and we're actually taking this onto to Hachandon um on Sunday so you'll be able to Another place to see us if you really want to. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to do this side as well. And again, I'm just using the edge of the foot. I'm just back stitching a weeny bit at the beginning. All the way across. And just back stitching again. Like that. Right. Okay. I'm going to take my pins out and then we can push this right through okay so get your fingers in there and in those corners and push this through right sides through and you can see you've got the start of your basket there okay we're going to do exactly the same now with the lining but with just one little difference um, where's my pen gone there it is we're going to sew down the sides and we're going to sew the bottom, but you need to leave a gap for turning. So we want to pop a three inch gap, three, four inch gap, you know, just a decent size gap. I tend to mark it just to remind myself to stop because the amount of times <laughs> just carried on sewing. So I'm going to leave that gap. OK, so I'm going to stitch down the sides. I'm going to stitch here, stitch here and up that side there. OK. So again, any questions, Drew, while we're there? Uh, Heidi said, found you, thanks. I uh, have to go in a mo, but thanks for sharing your experience. Oh, and that's okay. Wi-Fi. Thank Linda, you for joining us. Linda said, look, uh, on looks lovely. Oh, okay. uh, she loves the Liberty Tree of Life wall hanging. Yes, yeah, so that's that one up there. That's um, uh, an Alice, Alice Caroline pattern, uh, which we did ages ago. So, so there we go. So I'm going to go along that side seam. Okay, and then across the bottom. So don't forget to say hi, ladies, if you're there, okay? Because we are going to give away the set of baskets. You know, you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to have a conversation with me. But if you just say hello or give us a, a smiley face or something and comment, we will pop your name into the free prize draw. Okay, so I'm just going there. I'm just going to back stitch a little bit on that one. Uh, Dawn asks, do you have a pattern for the Tree of Life still? I don't, I'm afraid. It's not my pattern, that one, lovely. It's, um, if you go onto Alice Caroline's website, um, you'll be able to purchase it from her. Okay. And she does all, lots and lots of beautiful Liberty things. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so I've done exactly the same as I did with that one, but just leave that gap there. And then again, we're going to box the corners. So I'm going to open this out. Line up those seams at the bottom there. Put the pin in out of the way. 
and you can see what are we in like 25 minutes in and we are nearly done we're not far off being finished so it's called a one hour basket but even with you cutting out I reckon it's a, a lot less than an hour so we're going to stitch right across those two again uh, so Charlotte's asking do you use uh, to start your, uh, your fabric I do starch my fabrics yes um, I think particularly, I mean, you don't have to, lots of people manage without, but um, particularly if you, um, for quilting, and, and, you know, when you're doing lots of little small pieces, it just holds those threads and gives you a little bit more stability. So when you're cutting into them, they don't go off, you know, because fabric does like to have a mind of its own sometimes, doesn't it? And you can be cutting nicely and then suddenly it's all gone on the bias. So, or it's, you know, it's gone a bit skew with. So um, I do, I do use starch. Um, I like um, the June Taylor uh, Starch Savvy. I use that one a lot. And I also like the Best Press as well. Um, the Best Press I use if, um, if I don't want it to be really, really stiff and I just want to, you know, still have a bit of flexibility. The Starch Savvy I tend to use if I've got some fabrics that are very flimsy or I know I'm going to be cutting lots of small pieces because it gives a really, it gives a real stiffness to the fabric. Um, and you know that's really useful, really useful sometimes. So use different products for different things. Uh, Victoria is asking, hi, I love the baskets. Where do I get the measurements for the fabric? Oh, right. Yeah, so the pattern, um, I'll go through the medium ones again towards the end, um, but the pattern is actually available on our website, whitegeckocraftlounge.co.uk. Um, and the pattern, it's 4 95 and it's got all three sizes. So you've got all all three, and it's a full picture tutorial pattern, okay? Um, we can send one out in the post, or we can email it to you, whichever you prefer, okay? Right, so, line in the basket done. I'm going to leave that one inside out, okay? We're just going to attach the handles now. So you want to pop, oh, I'm just going to trim that little bit, just a weeny bit. Beth Shepherd asked, are you using a standard foot for your sewing machine? Yes, um, for this project I am. I'm just using a standard foot on there. Um, I can change the um, width of my stitch on this machine. Um, so if I want a quarter of an inch, I just move the needle across till it's a quarter of an inch from the edge of the foot. But yeah, standard foot on there. You could use your walking foot if you're using wadding, or you could use a quarter of an inch if you, if you prefer. I just just got my standard one on there okay right placement of your handles okay if you pop your, I tend to put my thumb across the seat that that side seam and if you put them either side of your thumb it's about an inch away okay you can make them a bit wider if you want but about an inch away so an inch that side pop a pin in there just hold that in place and then I'm going to curve this up and I'm going to go a thumb's width, so about an inch, <laughs> that side. Okay, so I've just pinned those in place like that. We'll turn it and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. So with the other handle, thumb width away from the seam like that. Okay, and then again, thumb width away there. You can, Like I said, you can measure it if you like. Um, I'm just a bit lazy Ooh. with stuff like that. Oh, it's flipped. Oh. Why is it flipped? <laughs> oh, is it, it all went upside down, did it? <laughs> it? It flipped in my face. Or oh, right, okay. No one wants to see that. No. <laughs> right, okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so, pop your handles on, and then we're going to put all of this inside here, okay? Like that. Uh, shove it all inside, okay? Now the lining is about half an inch smaller on the instructions. That lining, this piece is actually about half an inch smaller than the outside and we do that to keep the lining all nice and tucked in. Okay, so. Are they all laughing at you now? Because they're Catherine, they're, they're, Catherine, they're, Catherine Lum said hi Drew. <laughs> hi Catherine. <laughs> we had a little bit of a, a phone malfunction then <laughs> and I'm just pinning this all in place. So all I'm doing is kind of putting the top of the lining against that raw edge okay I'm pinning it all in place like that like that there we go uh, all the way around and then I'm going to top stitch I'm going to stitch those all together okay so I'm going to take the table off because it just makes life a bit easier 
and if you've got just a box on there take that off as well okay I'm gonna pop that underneath my machine like that oh, that's moved a wee bit sorry about that ladies let me just get that back in place there we go I'll pop that under the machine and I'm gonna stitch all the way around okay so while I'm doing this last bit of stitching Drew do you want to give me any last few comments because we won't go on much longer because it's uh <laughs> you don't need to listen to me for hours and hours everyone's just <laughs> hello to me they're done everyone's saying hello to me oh <laughs> amanda sarah Fran. i'm gonna have to sack my cameraman aren't i he can't do the camera properly <laughs> you won't sack him he's really useful he does all our one o'clocks for us <laughs> so i'm just going all the way round. like that until we get back to the beginning okay and again i'm just using the edge of the foot okay just go steady when you're going over the handles because it's quite thick oh i just it's just moved a weeny bit there we go and round we go okay i'll take my needle out and we'll take these pins out and then what we're going to do we're going to pull them all through it's got another pin somewhere lost it it'll be inside we're going to pull it through that gap okay so you're going to squeeze it all the way through like this be careful because remember this pins holding those handles in place so take those out as soon as you see them so that oh hang on i knew there was another pin in there there we go <laughs> take those out as soon as you see them okay there's one another one there i've left there there we go Sandra says, uh, camera and sound people never get credit for. Well done, Drew. <laughs> oh, Thanks, he Sandra. He doesn't do too bad a job, I have to admit. He doesn't do too bad a job. <laughs> but uh, there we go. So what we're, what we're doing now, okay, so I'm going to put my fingers, I tend to put my fingers into the corners of the lining and really push them into the corners of the basket. And can you see, by? I don't know if you can see here, by making the lining just that little bit smaller than the outside, by half an inch smaller, it just makes the lining sit inside so it's nice and neat on the outside okay and again do that into that one see linda says i always do a good job oh you can get a big head if all these all this praise drew mm -hmm. <laughs> okay and that's pretty much your basket done what i would do now is i would just top stitch all the way around that just to hold that in place and there's your little basket okay obviously you know you would clean up your threads and you do need to sort of slip stitch that bottom opening okay but i'm just i'm aware of time today so um i won't uh, i won't do all that bit on camera okay but it is just a simple top stitch around there and stitch up the bottom okay so i'll just run through very quickly the the dimensions again so i don't know drew if you want to come back around this way <laughs> um so what you want uh, so you need two rectangles of fabric which are 12 and a half by four and then two rectangles which are seven by four to make the handles and then your bottom piece is twelve and a half by three and a half and your lining is twelve and a half by seven but like i said the pattern is available on a website and it's got all three sizes okay so you've got all three sizes there so you've got a large medium and a little tiny small one and uh, these are the ones that we're going to give away i'm not going to give away pikachu because todd would never forgive me <laughs> But, um, but yeah, that's it, ladies. That's that's the one hour basket, which is not an hour. As you can see, we've been you've been listening to me rattle on for uh, 35 minutes. And uh, that's pretty much done. Got a little bit of hand sewing, a little bit of top stitching to do. And that medium one's done. The more you do, um, the more you make them, the, the quicker they get as well. They'd be really lovely for, um, I think, for Christmas presents as well. I know Christmas is a while away. But you could do like a little hamper of stuff for somebody in there, you know, put it in some cellophane and a nice bow. If you're making um, stuff for charity uh, charities, we're happy for you to use our patterns um, for charity, as long as it's not for personal gains, just for charity. So, you know, you could make these for, um, you know, for, to do a charity store, maybe fill them with some chocolates. You know, Easter time, you can, I know we're, we've just gone past Easter, but, you know, birthdays, anything really. And they are really useful all around the house. Um, you know, stick them by the door so you can stick your keys and your change and all in them instead of like my husband who leaves it all on the kitchen side <laughs> you know have some little baskets all around the place you could do them in oil cloth you know that lovely laminated cotton or oil cloth and make them washable you know so 
lots and lots of ideas. Um, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Are there any questions or comments there before we go, Drew? Uh, everyone says thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think it was. There you go. I lost it. Oh yeah, Catherine says I deserve a pay rise. <laughs> I don't pay him, so we can't have a pay rise. <laughs> Uh, you can have a pay rise from zero, which is um, zero. a penny an hour. <laughs> uh, that's a, uh, Sheila said that's a good tip about the line in size. Yeah. Um, everyone says it looks fab, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, good. really nice, simple project. Um, please do have a go, ladies. Um, you know, if you do make some, post them. Post them on the Craft Show page and post them on our, our Facebook page as well or on our Instagram. Um, we love to see what, what you're doing. Um, thank you so much for having me back. Um, it's yeah, it's lovely talking well, talking to you, chattering away on here to you guys. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, thank you to Craft Shows for having us. So, yeah, we'll see you soon. Um, hopefully, we'll be back again another time. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>